Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sticking with me on my journey. And my journey continues. We're just going to take a little bit of a different highway, um, but still the main highway that this journey seems to be going on. So I keep my eyes open on Etsy and eBay, a little bit on AliExpress and a few other sites, but I still gravitate back to Etsy and, and eBay for ideas, inspirations, and new pens. So when I saw Bobby, a Chinese pen, have this on Etsy, I said, wow, I'm, I'm impressed. So I ordered one and it arrived in a couple weeks. A nice velvet sleeve as the pen makes its appearance as the camera adjusts to the different lighting. We'll see at first glance a pen that is kind of confusing because there's a couple different common elements here but then something else that's a little different. Yes it does look like a Moonman M2 but not exactly. It does have that aluminum band there on the barrel and it is engraved with I think is the name of the manufacturer but I could be mistaken. It also has an interesting roll stop there and it has that swirl ribbon acrylic. Pen BBS calls it smog and Bobby called this pen smog but this has a little bit of a green tinge to it. Hopefully it's coming across with the light that I have. So all in all, um, a lot of people didn't like uh, the M2 because it didn't have a roll stop. This one now has a roll stop. And it's certainly a very interesting acrylic. I have a number of smog pens from uh, Pen BBS, and we'll compare those. And also the Moon Man uh, Wonkai also has a similar acrylic to it, but each of them a little different. The cap unscrews with about one and a quarter turns, which is nice because uh, some of the other pocket pens, the original Lakai, originally had uh, less than two turns, and then they came out with a different version of it that had like seven turns, so that was a little bit bad. And this pen aesthetically is just extremely pleasing to the eye. It does come with a converter, but obviously from my perspective, I would eyedropper this pen. Yeah, there's a nice O-ring there at the top of the section above the threads, which is where I like it. You know, this is just a classic low-end converter. You know, no special end there to keep it in place, but it, it could work well. So we're going to compare this to some other pens, take a look at it in detail, find an ink to go in here, and see how that uh, nib, which is... Just a generic nib. Let's we'll see how it works. I've seen this in a number of pens. And yeah, the same type of scroll work. And just a plastic feed on the back. The first pen that comes to mind, at least to my mind, is the Moon Man Wong Kai. It is very close. These could be basically the same maker of this resin, just with a different batch. It's still, it's still nice, and this came in a number of different finishes, and I certainly like this one the best. I just like that swirl pattern, and again, I can't imagine how one makes that resin. As you can see, there's a lot of variations in it. So that's the first comparison. The next comparison comes into play is with the Moon Man M2. Similar band there at the, in the barrel. Similar shape and design. Both of them, I would say, are classic pocket pens, no clip. But the, the way the ends of the barrel and cap are done are, are, are fairly different. You know, they still, have, <clears throat> they still have that plug at the top here. No cap liner or anything. You can see the innards. This one never came with a converter, to the best of my recollection. The Wonkai, they gave you some cartridges which I never used but all in all again the, there's a lot of similarities they may have been made in the same factory I mean one of my theories about pen making in China is is that um, 
some of these pen manufacturers uh, are job shops, and so people bring ideas to them like Moon Man, Lorelei, you know, etc. And they make the pens, and then after a while they decide to make their own version of the pen, which might be what the Fan Moo is. The pen easily disassembles. Yeah, the nib and feed pulled out very easily from the collar, which unscrews from the section. Yeah, barrel and cap we've already explored. The section looks like it could be familiar. A lot of O-rings there, which is very nice because that's going to keep ink from seeping past uh, those threads. But I will silicone grease these. You may ask, doesn't this look familiar? It's very close to the Moon Man, but it is slightly smaller, so you just can't use a Moon Man nib collar to swap nibs in and out with this. And it's a shame because the Moon Man nib collar is transparent, so I think it would lend itself to this design very well. Just a standard generic uh, low-end uh, converter there. As we admire that resin, which they did an excellent job. So. You know, smog is what Pen BBS uses, and that's a white ribbon. This is kind of a very pale green ribbon, which is more like the Moon Man Wong Kai, and that uh, roll stop there in red, which matches the red band. I mean, it's, I'm impressed. I like it. We're going to put it together, figure out what ink we're going to use, and put nib to paper. So the next obvious comparison is the Pen BBS smog resin. So I have uh, four of them. I'm lucky to have gotten four of them in smog. I uh, toy with getting one pen in every finish, but that's a lot of work and a lot of pens. So the closest one is the 308, which has a similar, you know, bullet ends to them, a little bit more rounded, but has that nice plug of plastic at either end. But of course, this has a clip. Here's a 323, which is another simplistic design, but a great writer's pen. Here's a 355, which I think is one of my uh, valued acquisitions, because the 355 seems to be either being phased out or certainly made in much smaller numbers. Um, sometimes there's none on the uh, Pen BBS Etsy site. So, um, sad but true, but I was able to snag a fair number of 355s and some very nice finishes, so I'm very happy about that. And here's your 309, which was their first piston filler, which has a problem with sticking pistons, which I explain my theory is to always keep the piston slightly in. So the first time you try to use it, you're pulling the piston up, and that seems to free the piston from, from its frozen condition. If the piston's all the way up to the top, you can turn this and it's not going to do anything because the rod is not connected to the piston, so it doesn't turn the piston to break it free. Once you start the piston moving, it moves smoothly up and down. So it's one of those scenarios where the material of the piston versus the inside of the barrel sometimes just gets stuck. And I have disassembled these pens, cleaned them, scrubbed them, silicone greased everything, and I still had the piston get stuck. So it's part of the design. And I would be remiss if I didn't compare it to the original pen, the Lakai, which I used to mispronounce as Lyca, but it's Lakai, which again was that first pen that I saw came in uh, only transparent, nothing else as far as my recollection goes. And I put a nice nib in this, and we might compare the writing. And this has been inked up since the day I got it. It has a nice Pen BBS purple sparkly ink in it, which uh, still flows quite well after being in a pen for a year. But this design has evolved. Uh, no more flat tops. It made a pointy top with the M2, and this fan new also has that design. But just uh, interesting to watch that evolution of, of pens from China. There was a discussion about silicone grease with some of my viewers. So this is what I've been using for years. This is what uh, divers use, so it's uh, safe for contact with the skin and everything, but it's pure silicone grease. 
And of course, this tube will last me my lifetime. And I silicone grease everything, even though that O-ring there supposedly would still seal without silicone grease. It just makes removing the section and, and inserting the section just better because that silicone grease lubricates that O-ring against the barrel and also on the thread. So that's just my safety of pens, you know, better be safe than sorry. And a little dab will do you. You don't need much, just enough to seal and lubricate. I mentioned when I was going through my color cards, this caught my attention. It's definitely on the green side of turquoise. If we look at the chromatography, we'll see there's a lot of green and a little bit of very bright, intense blue there. So, you know, I got a, this discussion of teal versus turquoise. To me, I would put this in the teal family because the green is the dominant color. At least that's my theories. So some of my viewers have asked about eyedroppering, and so we're just going to do a quick little view. This ink called out to me. I was actually going through my color cards, and I noticed this when I said, I haven't used this for a while, so it's going into this pen. And here's those syringes. I buy them by the bulk load from China on eBay. They cost, you know, you maybe get five or six of them for a couple bucks, so very um, affordable. They have a blunt end, so you're going to not accidentally pierce yourself with them. And they work very well. I like them with a long tube like this, so you can start at the bottom and just uh, put ink in here. And I generally uh, fill it up until it reaches near those threads. And the other thing I like to do is is get rid of any ink that's on those threads. It's just aesthetics more than anything. There we go. It's pretty clean. And I've silicone greased that, so it's going to go in very easily. You know, get those threads started. And we're all set to go. So we're going to invert the pen, put the cap on and invert it. Let the ink saturate that feed, which could take a few minutes. I'm in no rush. And then we'll put nib to paper. So the pen has been inked up. I didn't measure the amount of ink that went in there. I would guess based on the syringe, which the markings have come off, it was a good three milliliters, which is an excellent amount of ink. Should last a long time. In uh, writing with the pen, I noticed one flaw in the design, which I do not like. And it looks like it should post, but it really it posts very long, it's not secure, and that I think is a miss on the designers of this pen. It wouldn't have taken any effort to increase this a little bit or shave this down a little bit. In order to make it post like the M2 does, where it posts fairly deeply and sec relatively securely, but it certainly is more secure and deeper and fits better in the hand than the than move pen. So that's kind of the things that you find out over time with the with a pen. And I don't normally post pens, but there are times when you need to put the cap someplace in the end of the pen is the most logical place. My first impressions with the nib is it writes well, but not great. The, uh, the nib requires a little bit of pressure paper with a little bit of texture to it. Works well with this, but if you're on a smoother paper, um, you may feel it has a little bit of hard starts or lack of consistency. So what I would do is I would smooth this nib like I've shown in the past with other pens. But I'm going to write with it for a little bit longer before I decide that the nib requires some additional tuning. 
So overall, let's uh, rate this pen. I'm going to give it an 8.7. It gets one check for visuals, and that's it from, from my perspective. Let's go into the details. So let's run down here. Design, I'm going to give it reluctantly two checks. I was thinking about giving it one. Engineering, I'm going to give it three checks because it's well engineered to just set the design has some drawbacks to it. And the build is also three checks. You know, very well done. Everything fits together well. I like that O-ring, the multiple O-rings on the nib assembly. Everything else looks good. Writing, I'm going to give it one check. Look, it's going to get three checks. And value, I'll give it two checks. You know, for this price point, there's a number of pens available. I just ordered a what looks to be like an M2 pen for $4 from some place in Canada. It was Canadian dollars that I spent it for. So that's how it adds up to an 8.7 in my math. So why am I not as happy with the nib? Well, this is a Wong Kai, which has been inked up for well over a year. And it's a first time every time writer. It's just hard to put that cap on over the camera. And I like this nib. Requires no pressure. Lays down a very, very nice, consistent line. Feels good in the hand. It's just the right size once you put that cap on. If you need to do quick writing, I've actually written with this without the cap on it. I don't have any ink buildup in, in the cap, and this has been knocked around. It's been in, you know, um, pen cases. It's been carried around. So this is my standard and it still stays up there. This isn't a real apples to apples comparison because this has that nice, just a nice grind on this nib from my perspective. It was an oblique double broad and I had it ground to a left oblique. And this pen has also been inked up for well over a year and it has pen BBS pearl paint which has glitter in it and it works fine. I sometimes think this is the purple one, but um, you know the challenge I have is, is when you do a schmear, it doesn't seem to be purple. It's more of a gray with just a little touch of purple in it. So that to me was the, the pearl one. But this just is a, I've always enjoyed writing with this pen. It just feels great on the paper. And that makes my day. So we've come to the end of uh, this review. So thank you for watching. May you have many great writing experiences and find pens you love and pens you enjoy. And you know this pen does a lot for me visually. I, I like some of the attributes but they missed the boat on on other ones. So um, I'm certain there might be other versions of this pen or this might be the only one out there and I can easily swap out the nib and that will address one of my challenges. The section is about as small as I would want a section to be. We'll give you those dimensions. We should have done that earlier. So here's the end. Go out and have fun. Enjoy life. Record your experiences. Uh, share them. And that makes them, to me, even better. So we're going to say bye for now. Until the next video. Yep, that nib needs some work. Well, this is a PS to the writing because I just couldn't leave the nib the way it was. So this is something that I thought would work well. And this is just a diamond coated nail file. Got it on Amazon. I just felt they would get a little bit of a higher grade one than the normal uh, inexpensive one you might get in a drugstore or supermarket. And I just did figure eights on here, rotating the nib a little bit. 
with uh, a light pressure, and this is the coarse side, you can feel it. Flipped it over, this is the smoother side, and did the same type of motions for about 10 seconds. And then I went to my fingerboard, nail board, and did a little bit on these two sides, which is a uh, coarse and a medium, not anywhere near uh, cutting like the nail file, the diamond nail file will do. And then I polished on this side, wrote with it, and felt it needed a little bit more. So I have this polishing paper, micro mesh polishing paper, 12,014, whatever. And I did a lot on here to really fine tune the nib to be what I think now is quite good. I mean, this now writes really, really well, a lot less feedback, and it puts ink down as soon as it touches paper, doesn't require much pressure. So even though under the loop the nib looked okay, I did take a little bit of that tipping material off, but it's certainly going to last my lifetime as far as my using of this particular pen. So I'm quite happy. So the nib is now very good. My writing is not. So we're going to say bye. Boy, is my writing bad. We're going to say bye for the second time. Enjoy your pens. This one's now writing well. <laughs>